How you doing? This is the guy from Pittsburgh. And I played that thing of a little cat meowing because that's about what I want to talk about. And before I do that, I want to show something now. Little Chris has been complaining and other people. I've got all these books on my shelf. I've read most of them. This is one I've had for about three years. I skimmed it when I got it. It's been sitting on the shelf in my living room. And the only reason I haven't learned Photoshop is I don't have a version that's compatible with the Max I'm using. Somewhere around here is Photoshop 5.0 or 0.2 or whatever the hell it is. And it's Photoshop 6, but they won't work on this Mac. So once I get a version that will work on this Mac or the one in the living room, which has, I think, Mavericks on it. I will learn Photoshop. And this is a very good book. Came from England. It has a disc showing you how to do this. And it tells you all about how to learn how to do stuff in Photoshop. And this is the kind of stuff I have in here. There's some books I've got to, I've read that I don't have the programmers for, but I wanted to learn about the, the software. But anyway, I'm going to talk about something I posted a couple years ago. And this is going to be the first of my paranormal experiences. And I'm reading off the screen because um, it's been a while and stuff I write is sometimes better than the stuff I talk about. So if you'll bear with me, I'll add a few things to this post that I put on my blog. The meow is out there. Okay, uh, this is about the ghost of Mickey and Minnie Cat. Now, I've had cats since 1977 when my first girlfriend, Julie, very sweetly came to me and said, Would you watch my kitties for a week while I go to Oregon? Well, there was Squirt Squirt, the little Siamese, Trippy, the cat, black and white tuxedo cat who walked around and talked to herself, Lily Put Put, who did much the same, and Trippy. And Trippy would talk to herself also. She would go forward like this, turn her head to the left, go meow, walk forward a little more, turn left to right, go meow, walk forward a little, go turn. She always did that. I don't know why. It's the strangest thing I've ever seen a cat do. She'd walk around the house and talk to herself. So I had four cats, didn't know anything about spaying and neutering, and at one point wound up with 15 cats. I had kitties all over the place. But about six years ago, my poor Minnie Mouse cat, very sweet little black cat, the um, litter mate of her brother Mickey Mouse, who was a black and white tuxedo cat and kind of a stinker, she he was run over in front of my building. Very loving, loved to be held and cuddled. He loved to sit in his cat tree, which is where Fuzzy likes to sit now, my black and white tuxedo little girl. And... He adored Mickey Mouse. And we named him Minnie Mouse because M-I and I, we thought Minnie Mouse was a girl. Because we got them because their mama cat, who was a stray, brought them and they were very sick with a uh, infection. They weren't any bigger than this card. They were about a month and a half old. So I took them to the vet. Minnie was very sick. Uh, compared to Mickey, Minnie was the smaller one of the two. And when they were recovering, Mickey used to kick Minnie in the head when Minnie would be washing Mickey. And Mickey always had this aggressive stinker streak in him. He hated other cats who'd come to the door. And uh, so I fed them. I came home one night, saw these little things running across the floor when I lived with my girlfriend in Concord, and I thought they were rats, because it was dark in the hallway, <clears throat> and they were little kittens, they fit in my hand, and I gave them antibiotics and KMR, and Minnie would be washing Mickey, and Mickey would kick Minnie in the head and start fighting with him and wrestling with him. And no amount of yelling at Mickey would stop him from doing that. He was the most stubborn cat I've ever had. Although I've had some pretty stubborn cats who did what they want and got into mischief. So years passed. 
I moved in here and I had brought Boop in, who is a cat that became abandoned by someone I knew, left her out to starve to death, got her defleed, dewormed, neutered. Boop is a very sweet black and Burmese cat and she's now with Kathy. And Mickey used to chase Boop out, not only out of the apartment, but out of the complex. He would run all across the lawn and chase her in the next building over. And the neighbor there, one day I went calling for Boop, because I love, everybody loved Boop. Boop would sit in your lap and go to sleep on the benches here with people sitting out in the sun. And she's at your cat. I said, yeah, well, she's in here. And there was Boop sitting on the couch of this lady and sound asleep. And she, she comes in here all the time. She loves me, but we're not allowed to cats here. So I had to eventually give Boop to Kathy, and her full name is Betty Boop. So I got my first sinus infection. I couldn't breathe normally, and I couldn't pay attention to the cats because I was so sick. And one day, Fluffy the cat came into my apartment, and you've seen Fluffy. He's a long-haired, black-and-white cat, and ate some food and adopted me. And for a long time, the three cats lived happily. They would sit in the window perch over behind me, where Fuzzy is now, and go to sleep, all cuddle up like a big ball of black and white fur. And one day, Mickey got a bug in his head to start attacking Fluffy. And then Minnie saw this and emulated his litter mate. They made Fluffy life hell by constantly attacking him first Mickey and then Minnie and I would let them outside Fluffy was born here and at one time he had 14 litter mates he was one of four that are uh, five that are that were left the rest found good homes and were spayed and neutered two of them disappeared tiny one and shy one two black cats I don't know what happened to them and there's little girl, the long-haired black cat who comes in here, who's afraid of doors. She loves wet food. She meows every time there's wet food. She hears the can in the kitchen, comes running, is it for me? And I have to give her a little bit of the wet food. And there's Fluffy and Fuzzy, her, uh, her litter mates. So they get along with each other most of the time. So one night I'm ill, I spent much of my time sleeping Fluffy, Minnie, and Mickey had all gone out, and I woke up about 8.30 p.m., all three cats being dark, I couldn't see them, and this was in the summer. Kept calling and calling for Minnie with no response, because he always came in when I called. He slept in my pillow, he cuddled as close as he could to me in my arms, and would go to sleep and purr and purr. He loved to purr. No Minnie, no Minnie. I'm getting upset. And about midnight, my neighbor came up to me and asked if it was my cat lying in the road to the right of my apartment. I went over and saw it was Minnie. I went into hysterics, started sobbing, and went into respiratory distress. I couldn't breathe, called my girlfriend over, and she called the ambulance. I couldn't get any air in my lungs. I was crying so hard, I started choking. So she took me in Marin's room. The next day, I buried Minnie and grieved for him and for my loss. Mickey wandered around the apartment for days crying for Minnie but eventually stopped looking for Minnie but he never stopped attacking Fluffy. It took me a long time to stop grieving for him as it was so senseless. My building is very pet friendly with a huge front yard. I'd always thought my cats would be safe and protected from harm. And I figure somebody or something chased Minnie into the street because normally I would do everything I could to keep them out of the street. I live on a street where these people come down from the bars down the street and they tear up the street like a bat of hell and we have a playground for the local Catholic school next door and I'm always concerned that one of those kids is going to get hit. So I talk to Minnie and Mickey now and tell them I love them and I miss them and I will be with them one day and all my other cats that are gone. And time goes on, I go I go downstairs to feed the three litter mates of Fluffy. 
and Fluffy and Fluffy would be outside, and this is when Boop was still here. And I'd hear meowing noises in my apartment. Now the cat tree that Fuzzy sits on used to be behind me over in that corner. And I would tell Minnie, come here, go to your house. And she, he'd go, row, row, and climb up. And I'd have to feed him separately from Mickey because Mickey was a chow hound. And Minnie would happily go up there and eat his food and then hop on the bed that I had in here and cuddle with me and go to sleep. And he loved his cat tree, and there would be no cats in the apartment. And I kept hearing meowing. And it was coming from the cat tree area and from the window area where I have a big, two of those things you put in the window. They've got a U-shaped thing, and the cats love to sleep on that. Well, Mickey used to sleep on my pillow on, uh, above my head and Minnie, and we'd sleep under the desk where my computer was in the living room and sleep on my feet. He was very attached to me. Knew he was a number one cat in the apartment, would attack any cat who'd come in, including poor Fluffy. And a year ago in February, Mickey and Fluffy came up with severe, la severe lacerations to their head. Mickey had huge gashes above his right eye, which wouldn't heal no matter what I did, and I'd take him to the vet. My girlfriend loved Mickey very much, though he never cared much for her. He was afraid of her for some reason. We got to the vet. He was examined. We found that a tooth fell out of his mouth while he was being examined. He has massive cancerous tumors all through his head and mouth. And I didn't have the money to take, him home, take care of him then. I took him home. Later that month, I went to a different vet. She examined him and said he was in horrible pain with no chance of recovery, and I had to put him to sleep. I was so upset over it, I failed to take him home with me so he could be buried next to Minnie. I'd had him 10 years and felt terribly guilty over the fact that I, had, I thought I'd killed my kitty. I've had two other cats die of cancer on their own, but never had to put one to sleep before. And I was breaking down and crying uncontrollably after he died and after Minnie died. Partly because he'd been in my arms before he got put down and kept looking at me as if to ask, when are we going home? And he kept yelling at me and I would start sobbing. So a few weeks passed, I suddenly started seeing black shadow shapes of cats running in the kitchen, the hallway to the bedroom and the living room. This is a very tiny apartment, and while there is room for a cat to hide, only Fluffy was here, and he loves to spend much of his time outside. He spends as much as 18 hours a day outside. He loves to go outside more than any other cat I've ever had. Then I started hearing multiple meows in several places, and then the feelings of cat-furred bodies rubbing against me while I was on my computer or watching television on my chair. And that went on for about a year and then it stopped, but I still hear meowing in that corner and meowing in the living room. And there's no cat in the house. And I'm still seeing from time to time shadow cats running around meowing and having cat fur rub against me. And I think that both my cats are trying to tell me not to grieve, they're happy. But it still isn't easy for me. There are times where I've cried thinking about them. And I'm firmly convinced for a lot of reasons that people and animals remain after death and come back. And I've seen it several times and I've been pronounced dead twice and died a third time through an accidental electrocution and came back. So I know there's something beyond death. And that's not doing these videos for eternity. So I miss them very much. I tell them I love them and all my other kitties. And uh, I will be with them one day. And it will be a better place. And I believe it. So that's that's the story of um, Mickey and Benny and Fluffy is not as cuddly as they were. 
She loves to be petted. She doesn't like to be held in my arms on the couch. She's frightened of the couch. And she loves to be petted on, on the little um, cat perch. She flops and starts kneading. And she uh, occasionally wants to sleep on the flannel blanket that Mickey was wrapped in before he died. And there's times where um, Fuzzy and Fluffy and Little Girl all want to sleep in the blanket at once. So I keep the blanket for that reason. Okay, I'm going to do another video in a minute. My voice is still kind of hoarse. Uh, I don't know why. I'm, I'm taking all the medication, but I'm having trouble uh, with my throat being sore. So this is the guy from Pittsburgh. Hello, Justin. Hello, Area 51 drone. Hello, little Chris. And uh, hello, Bill Gabbers. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. And free art bell. And please donate to my PayPal account so I can do more videos. And I really don't care what the people who say I want people to pay for my stuff. Uh, it costs me money to do this. It costs me money to have the net, buy shirts. And I'd like to get a mixer board and some other things so I can do remotes and get out of this apartment from behind this uh, very cramped chair and table thing. So go to um, http uh, dot backslash backslash the guy from Pittsburgh at Bordos dot com and if you choose donate. I'm not the only one on the net that asks for donations and I don't think it's right for me to be singled out. But that's in your here or there. Okay, free art bell. Christmas is coming in a couple of days, and I hope you're enjoying yourself wherever you are, and are being safe and uh, warm. Okay, catch you next time. Bye-bye.